Have you just received a new set of oil paints but don't know where to start? Do you want to learn more about mediums and thinners or not sure if they're right for you? In this clip, I will run through the key items that you will need to start you on your oil painting journey and more importantly, the ones that you don't need. So watch until the end before you venture out to the store to stock up on those unnecessary purchases. It can be very bewildering when you first start researching oil painting and then venture into the art supplies shop to find different brands of oil paints and mediums. The first question you need to ask yourself is what am I going to be painting? Before you embark on your first masterpiece, you will need to handle and experience the oil paints. You may have experience of using acrylic and watercolour, but oil paints work very differently. I often get asked, what is the difference between student and artist grade oil paints? With the artist grade paint, you have more pigment and less oil. This is what gives the paintings the richness of colours and tonal values. Any paints should be fine, but I would personally recommend Dale Rowney and Winsor & Newton for beginners. To begin with, I would recommend buying a set with a selection of colours but no more than 10, and if it has a large tube of white, even better. I have links in the descriptions below for some recommendations. These are the basic colours that you will need to get started for most projects. A large tube of titanium white, if that's possible, as this is the colour that you will use the most. Ivory black, cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, ultramarine blue and sap green. Some of you may have heard safety warnings about cadmium paints and if you have concerns I would advise you to do your own research to see if cadmium is appropriate for your needs, especially if you're young, for example a child or a student. At present, in oil paint form, paint manufacturers recommend that you don't eat, smoke or drink while painting in order to avoid ingesting potentially harmful substances from paints, solvents, etc. Cadmium paints, unlike pigments and soft pastels, don't give off dust or fumes, so there's no need to worry about inhaling anything harmful while painting. The caution is if you're a messy painter, in which case I would suggest you wear protective gloves. And if you sand or spray your finished dried painting, then you should wear the appropriate respiratory equipment. If you're looking to learn oil painting skills, then you won't need to go and buy a stretch canvas straight away. It's better to start with small studies, learning the skills so that you can gradually build up to larger pieces. This way you can learn what your strengths are and learn about the oil painting medium. To start with, you can get a canvas pad or canvas boards. These are a great way to track your progress and also easier to store than stretch canvases. I would recommend A3 and A4 to begin with. Initially, you will only need a few brushes. Two brushes will be more than enough to get you started. Flats are really good and I would recommend getting a size two and six and make sure that you have a long handle. I've also bought sets in the past of brushes and over the years I've found that many of them get put to one side because I just don't use them. I would also recommend that you get a small palette knife for mixing your paints. Your paint brushes can get ruined if caked in paint when mixing and using a palette knife will reduce this happening. At this stage you won't really need to use mediums, however you will need a solvent or paint thinner of some description to thin your paint for adhesion to the surface you're painting on. When your painting skills progress you will add mediums or oils to later layers for a glossy effect to your painting. This is to make sure that the painting dries properly and doesn't crack. It's otherwise known as the fat over lean rule. It doesn't stand for the amount of paint you add, it's just the fact that you are adding more oil as you add more layers. Paintings don't have to have three layers, they can have more or less. It's more about following the principle so your paintings are sustainable and don't crack as they dry. I prefer to use natural oils and natural solvents and they seem to be increasing in availability. There are different brands available in different countries, so check in your region. When I visited my local art stores, there was not much on display. The majority of non-toxic mediums I found were online, but this may be different in other countries. I use mainly Chelsea Classical Studio mediums and found that they are easy to use, but also toxin free. If you were looking for a solvent, the best one to go for in this range would be the Lavender Spike Oil. 
Zestit paint solvent is a natural solvent made from orange zest that is available in the UK and there are other brands available globally. Also, Gamblin have a solvent-free fluid and this seems to be available in a variety of countries. Remember, however, that the same safety rules with the natural solvents, for example, ventilation, still apply. When using oil paint, you will need a palette and I would recommend getting a palette paper pad. It couldn't be easier for cleaning and once you have finished, just tear and throw in the bin. It's useful to have a set of clothes for painting as it's difficult to get oil paint out of clothes, so I wouldn't recommend painting in your favorite outfit. I have a few old jumpers, t-shirts, and a couple of painting aprons. So now for some basic health and safety tips if you're new to oil painting. It is vital that you keep the room that you're painting in well ventilated to ensure good airflow. Read all the labels of all the materials you're buying, especially solvents and mediums. Don't eat, drink or smoke in your studio space. When disposing of any toxic material, check with your local authority regarding collection methods. If you are using any rags containing combustible materials such as linseed oil, make sure you wet these down. Certainly don't leave the house. And a good rule of thumb is to empty your painting waste at the end of each day. And finally, you will need paper towels or rags for cleaning as well as some old jars. If you want to find out more about how to clean your brushes in a really straightforward way, then tap or click on this clip where I will go into more detail into the easy time-saving way I keep my brushes clean.